The Long Island Incident, NBC next Sunday. On a train bound for Long Island, her husband killed, her son wounded. Oh my God! Kevin McCarthy only has a 10% chance of surviving this. You're wrong. I'm Kevin's mother, and he's going to live. When the gunman put his victims on trial... You did not see the shooter. How dare you? Carolyn McCarthy brought him to justice. Tomorrow you will be sentenced, and then you will be gone forever. Based on her inspiring true story, Lori Metcalf, The Long Island Incident, NBC next Sunday. This week in The Tonight Show, Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, Laura Dern, and Stevie Nicks. Your local news is next. A six-month-old baby boy found dead along the road. Tonight, police are looking for the father who now faces criminal homicide charges. 11 at 11 starts now. Channel 11 News. Coverage you can count on. Good evening. Police search for a butler man wanted in the death of his infant son. That story tops tonight's 11 at 11. Butler Township Police say Stephen Lewis Duffy faces criminal homicide charges accused of killing his six-month-old son, Brandon. They tell us the child's body was found early this morning along a road in Butler Count, uh, Township. Channel 11 Sarah Barr joins us live from Butler County with the late-breaking details. Sarah, I understand police are saying the father had a fight with the baby's mother last night. Yes, Jodine, police are saying that and neighbors are saying that the couple had a history of domestic violence. And tonight, their worst fear is now a reality. There was one time when Steve was over here talking to my husband and I and he had threatened the baby and done to us, saying that he was going to kill them and then kill himself. And neighbors in their development say that's only the tip of the iceberg. They talk about protection from abuse orders. And Butler police have Stephen Duffy's picture on file. Now they want him for criminal homicide for the death of his six-month-old son, Brendan. Police say the couple argued at his parents' house on Short Street. Later, Jennifer Duffy was at a neighbor's, worried sick over her son. She was very, very upset. Uh, she wanted her baby back. She don't know where he went with the baby. Early Sunday morning, a couple passing by made the gruesome discovery along Ryber Road. Neighbors say it's just around the corner from the other grandparents' house. One neighbor called 911. Others described what the strangers experienced. She was going to proceed CPR on him, and it was too late. He was already blue. The Browns are members of the Westminster Presbyterian Church. On Easter, the congregation was asked to pray for the family. Neighbors say Duffy was being counseled by Pastor Jim Smith, who says he has, quote, tremendous sensitivity to the family's burden right now. But the Browns say despite the prayers, their worst fears came true. I remember saying to my husband, I fear, I, you know, the only thing I fear for is that little baby. And neighbors talk about Duffy's violent temper, and police are still searching for their suspect. Now, if you have any information on this case, you're asked to call 911 or the number you see on that screen. And that number is 724-287-7769. Reporting live, I'm Sarah Barr, Channel 11 News. Thanks, Sarah. A two-year-old girl is dead tonight after a house fire today in Lincoln Borough. It happened along Glassport Elizabeth Road. Investigators say the fire began in an upstairs bed. Difficult day ahead. Returning to classes after they say their 14-year-old classmate opened fire on them at a graduation dance on Friday. One teacher was killed, another teacher and two students were injured. Earlier today, many Edinburgh residents made their way to church services. Members of this tight-knit community wonder why this tragedy happened here. Signs and police kept the news media at bay, while the local school superintendent asked for cooperation. And so I'm asking you, I'm begging you, as you do your job, help us. Help our children, help our community, and help all of us in, the, in this grieving process. Tonight, 14-year-old Andrew Wurst sits in jail, accused of the violent crime against his classmates and teachers. Earlier today, Arnina Pineda was in Edinburgh. The rain and gray skies punctuated the somber mood in Edinburgh. The tiny university towns reeling in the aftermath of random violence that claimed the life of one of their own. I think we're all surprised and we're all scared. Edinburgh psychologist Dennis Vallone claims aggression has been escalating drastically among young people and warning signs, very apparent in this case, go ignored. He said that he was going to take a gun to this dinner dance and he had 10 shells and he was going to kill uh, nine people that he hated 
and shoot himself. Andrew Wurst's friends said they started referring to him recently as Satan. Counselors will be on hand to talk to them and other students when they return to school for the first time since their middle school dinner dance ended in a hail of flying bullets that had children ducking for cover in closets. It's a lot more labor intensive. Pennsylvania State Police claim their investigation has been hampered by varying witness accounts about what happened. More than 200 people, mostly eighth graders, say they saw their 14-year-old classmate emerge from the bathroom carrying a pistol and open fire. The actor then walks through the back room, uh, had a confrontation with another person, then made it to the dance floor dining room area. Shot in the head and back was teacher John Gillette. He was memorialized during Sunday mass at the church he attended with his wife and three children. It's like a pall that's hanging over us right now. It's a very depressing and very difficult time. Kind of a time to just wade through some real deep emotions here. Andrew Wurst is in the Erie County Jail. The DA there is pushing for him to be tried as an adult. He's being held without bond until his pretrial hearing on May 1st. In Edinburgh, Nina Pineda, Channel 4 Action News. Funeral services for John Gillette are scheduled for Tuesday in Edinburgh. The lawyer for Andrew Wurst says the 14-year-old is devastated about the shooting. Attorney Philip Friedman met with Wurst in prison. Friedman says both Wurst and his parents are expressing grief. A hearing for Andrew Wurst is set for Friday. Far from child's play, kids and guns also led to another death today. This one at a birthday party in Greensboro, North Carolina. The last party for six-year-old Carlos Gilmer. Police say a four-year-old playmate shot and killed him. Both boys known for their rough playing, but this time playing hide and seek, the boys found a loaded handgun in a purse. Apparently, no one knew the gun was loaded. I don't know. I think it's just going to be a, a great loss, you know, because we're so used to seeing Carlos ride the bicycle, and he's a sweet kid. He's a sweet kid. Everybody loves Carlos. Police could file charges because they say the gun was so easily accessible to the children. As for the deadly shooting itself, police say it looks accidental. And caught in this house, one more child dead after fire swept through this duplex in Lincoln Borough. Five companies responded to the two alarm blaze. Police tell us a father and one other child escaped the burning duplex on Lincoln Boulevard. Two-year-old Carly Williams did not. An autopsy will be performed tomorrow to find out exactly how Carly died. Sheila. Tonight, the Hazelwood community remembers baby Joseph and the tragic story of his death. The newborn's body was found two years ago on Palm Sunday behind a local church. This is now an annual memorial service for baby Joseph held this year at Hazelwood Presbyterian Church. Also remembered during the service, Anthony Shipsmith and Ryan Hackey, two local toddlers both killed by gunfire. Ryan Hackey's father, Tom, spoke during the service. I know that Anthony and Ryan are friends and are proud of how they're being honored today and how we're honoring baby Joseph. I know that the dear Lord is, is proud that we are we're all gathered here today to be friends and to share his word. Bas baby Joseph's mother, by the way, has never been found. Mm. In tonight's news, county by county, another arrest in a 1996 Christmas Eve killing. Beaver County, the murder outside in Ambridge Bank. 47-year-old Calvin Russell was shot in an apparent robbery attempt here. Police have charged Lynn Edward Elms of Ambridge with the murder. They say Elms and suspect Michael Jester thought they would find money in Russell's bag. A tip led police to both men. I'm Christina Arangio, Bureau Chief in Fayette County. The county has been awarded a $50,000 grant that will help revitalize the economy. Governor Ridge informed the county that it would be receiving the money as part of the Enterprise Zone program. County officials say the financial support will bring jobs and economic development into the area. I'm Tonya Caruso in Aliquippa. Don't be surprised if your water is a little bit discolored in the morning. At midnight tonight, crews will begin flushing out fire hydrants all over the city. The process should take about a week. The water department says if your water is a bit discolored, just let it run until it's clear. Tonight, Mellon Bank off the merger block, at least by a vote of the board of directors. At a meeting today, members unanimously rejected the unsolicited merger offer from the Bank of New York. The reasons? Mellon cites incompatible business strategies with Bank of New York. Board members say the merger would not be in the best interests of shareholders, customers, employees, and the communities. Well, the driving rainstorm today didn't put a stop to parkway construction. For the second Sunday in a row, crews continued to resurface parts of the parkway west.
the biggest highway fix up in the history of the state. Detours are posted, but aren't making it easy for motorists who have to sidestep the parkway. The inbound lanes from I-79 to Carnegie will reopen at 6 tomorrow morning. Now a time to remember and never forget. Through music and song, candles and pictures tonight, people from both the Jewish and Christian communities came together to remember the six million Jews who died in the Holocaust from 1939 to 1945. Also tonight, Gentiles who risked their lives to save many Jews were celebrated. The South Hills Interfaith Ministries and the United Jewish Foundation held their 20th annual Holocaust Memorial. Tomorrow, State Treasurer Barbara Hafer plans to meet with survivors and their heirs to explain how they can file claims for property looted during the Holocaust. That meeting is set for tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the Jewish Community Center in Squirrel Hill. Coming up, a bus. A bus rolls off an interstate with students still inside. Lighting candles to remember lives lost at Chernobyl 12 years ago today. And later, some high-flying fun for a priest. Action Cam looking downtown tonight. Clearer skies moving in for the new week. And there's talk of some clearing for tomorrow. I'll have your 24-hour Donardo Weather Watch coming up next. Pittsburgh's number one truck selection headquarters, Barrow Chevrolet. Nobody sells more Chevy trucks for less than barrel. Always over 200 in stock. Always the lowest prices direct to you. Your new S-Series pickup, Blazers, and hard-working CK trucks. All rock bottom low. All the time. Before you buy any truck. Shop the truck selection headquarters. Barrel Chevrolet. Pittsburgh's number one full-line Chevy truck dealer. Period. Barrel Chevrolet. Route 19, Wexford. My idea? Install a stereo system on the Jimmy Page Robert Plant Tour Bus. You're in for a surprise. Amazing! Isn't it? And look at this installation. 1,650 watt amps, tweeters for high, mid-ranges here, and subwoofers for powerful mix. If you can drive it, we can put tunes in it. Best Buy. Now that's a great idea. Could I get a job on this tour? If something is made by Italians, then it's authentic Italian, right? Like Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. And Michelangelo's David. And Francesco Rinaldi's pasta sauces. They're authentic Italian. Because they're made by Italians. Us. us. And that's why it's got the taste. It's got the taste. It's got the taste. Francesco Rinaldi pasta sauces made by Italians. It's got the taste. And that's the straight scoop. It's time for the Oldsmobile Award Reward Sales Event. The event where Oldsmobile gets the award and you get the reward. Reward yourself with a spaciously well-equipped Oldsmobile 88, winner of a Consumer's Digest Best Buy Award eight years in a row. Buy one and reward yourself with low 1.9% financing. Or reward yourself with a sophisticated Oldsmobile Cutlass, loaded with V6 power, leather-trimmed interior, 1.9% financing, and the AAA Top Car Award. Head into your local Oldsmobile dealer now. You'll be rewarded handsomely. The Five on Action News. Should your children learn to read? Before they learn to walk. Tuesday at 11, following NYPD Blue. Are you constantly checking your thinning hairline? Well, you're not alone. Get the facts on beating baldness. Wednesday at 11, following Primetime Live. It's your backyard, and neighboring states are using it to dump tons of their garbage. You won't believe why Pennsylvania is becoming America's dumping ground. With Sally Wigan and Scott Baker, Channel 4 Action News is everywhere. Channel 4 Action News at 11 is everywhere. Live with Sheila Hyland, Baron James. Tonight, a weather watch with meteorologist Stephen Cropper and action sports with Pat Paris. Action News continues. There may be a public funeral for James Earl Ray. Arrangements are being made in Memphis, the city where Martin Luther King Jr. was killed 30 years ago. Ray's brother says the family wants the funeral in Memphis rather than Nashville, where Ray was serving time in jail. James Earl Ray died, of course, Thursday of liver failure at the age of 70. 
A vacation tragedy in Colorado. A sledding accident leaves two teens dead. It happened in Winter Park, Colorado. Police say the girls used a chairlift pad to slide down the mountain. They crashed into a group of trees on a trail that had been closed to skiers. Some terrifying moments for some Alabama teens returning from a choral competition. Their bus driver suffered a heart attack and the bus swerved off an interstate and overturned. The students somehow managed to crawl to safety through the bus windows. Orlando, Florida is witnessing its largest brush fire ever. So far, flames have consumed over 350 acres of woods. Right now, no homes are threatened, but the fire is burning just eight miles from SeaWorld. A chemical spill in Texas forced residents to stay inside their homes with their air conditioners off. Silica gas and oil escaped from an Amoco gasoline plant this morning. A scary cloud of soot, but the good news, no one hurt. And in Elgin, Illinois, a diary from the doomed liner Titanic went at auction for $65,000. It contains pictures and even two letters written by a survivor. Remembering those who died in the world's worst nuclear accident. Ceremonies at Chernobyl in tonight's news around the world. Mourners gather to light candles for those who died at Chernobyl 12 years ago. Cleanup workers suffered most after putting out the fire following the explosion. Officials say some 800,000 children are now suffering from radiation illness. Water emergency in Spain. Workers frantically dug ditches and built makeshift dikes to save one of Europe's great wildlife reserves from being poisoned by millions of tons of acid water. The cracked mine released the acid into a river. Former U.S. Senator and presidential candidate Bob Dole is in Bosnia. He's chairing a panel to find Bosnians who disappeared during the country's civil war. And a shuttle crew relieved to be back to work on board Shuttle Columbia. A leaky valve in the shuttle's air purifier is fixed. It threatened an early return to Earth. Are you losing sleep about losing your hair? Male baldness, just one of the special reports we're working on for Action News this week. Here's Sally Wiggin with a preview. We've got special reports coming up all this week on Action News. Tuesday night at 11, hair loss. Two words that strike fear into the hearts of many men. I started to panic. I needed security as far as the top of my head goes. Yeah. The image. Medical editor Marilyn Brooks will talk with men about their fears, and she'll take a look at what's out there to stop men from going bald, what works and what doesn't. It's a story you won't want to miss if you're a man who's losing sleep about losing hair, or the woman who cares about it. Then on Wednesday at 11, Jim Parsons with a Team 4 investigation that may make you feel like you're being dumped on. Some say they're trashing Pennsylvania, out-of-state waste haulers who have made Pennsylvania the nation's number one dumping ground. Whose garbage are you bringing here? Uh, Hunts Point recycling out of New York. Why are they allowed to get away with it? Well, by getting our own act together, we became an inviting, uh, if you would, target. That's the old, if you build it, they will come, and they're coming. I'm Jim Parsons, a Team 4 investigation coming up. It's just one of the special reports ahead on WTAE. I'm Sally Wiggin, Channel 4 Action News. We haven't been outside in a while. Did that rain finally let up? Has ended. Yeah, well, I know earlier we could hear it in here, so we're not Coming hearing down. it now. Uh -huh. That's good. We ended up with an inch and a half at the airport. Flooding problems in Tarentum early tonight, uh, so things have quieted down much outside, and we think that trend will continue. Also cooler, and you'll notice that tomorrow, but we will see more in the way of some sunshine eventually tomorrow. Cloudy sky still lingering tight, though, as you wake up tomorrow morning early. 40 degrees the wake-up temperature. Rain has come to an end locally, and we think it should be a dry commute in for you. 42 and 56 the normals, 42 and 60. Uh, 42 and 56, the actuals, excuse me, 42 and 64, the normals. So again, on the low side, temperature-wise, with the currents showing a mostly cloudy setup at the airport. 10 miles visibility, current air temperature now at 42, 93% humidity. Winds are now from the northeast at 12, and pumping in some of that cooler, drier air. Barometer on the rise at 3001. Setup at this hour includes the front a little farther south. We were talking earlier about the rain showers running along this front. It has now sagged to the south, taking with it most of the heavy rainfall. We do see some clearing upstream, and we are noticing already the fall in the thermometer, and so that will continue through the evening tonight and that will translate into a day tomorrow that will be again below normal but we do think that most of the showers will be to our south and we will begin to work in some of that drier air which will clear the skies a bit 
Regional radar perspective shows that line of showers continuing to sink to the south and to the southeast. Uh, still some healthy rain showers running now across the border into West Virginia and Maryland. And on next red Doppler radar, we'll point out uh, those two counties in particular are also across Preston and Tucker County in West Virginia. National Weather Service keeping a flood watch in effect there until 1 o'clock. However, uh, it looks like most of the steady rain has ended. Still some runoff problems with the heavy rainfall totals coming in across Cambria County and the mountain areas today, upwards of two, two and a half inches. Again, at the airport at two inches, we had uh, an inch and a quarter almost here at the uh, at local station. So a lot of rainfall coming down in a pretty quick period of time during the 24 hour period and uh, most of that now falling to the south. Back to the big maps and we'll show you the big picture as far as the radar goes. Little ripples of uh, rain showers trying to make it into parts of Ohio but falling apart as that trend of drier air continues to suppress that line of showers to the south. Big blow up of showers and storms still clogged up across Texas. This will hang on for a couple of days and then eventually this system will come at us come uh, Wednesday. So we'll be sandwiched in between with a couple of days of dry out time. 42 now the air temperature already at 38 in Youngstown, 33 in Erie, 43 Cleveland, 32 in Bradford and talk of white stuff falling in the high levels of the mountains earlier uh, today. Cloud cover does show that line continuing to work to the south. We should begin to work in with drier air during the day tomorrow. So the setup is an improving one. Do look though for a uh, cooler setup as well. So if you are traveling south wet here, it should become partly cloudy. 24 hour Denardo weather watch uh, cloudy and cooler indeed. Low to 39 up tomorrow to a high temperature only of 54 becoming partly cloudy and cool again down tomorrow night. Frost in the picture scattered frost cold temperatures down to freezing at 32 and the extended forecast starts with Tuesday partly cloudy 70 degrees and as we are 63 degrees excuse me 70 as we stroll into Wednesday and we think that western system will begin to kick in some showers uh, during Wednesday and continue the trend during Thursday and Friday. We are starting off though with another nice weekend okay. next weekend. Right. Fantastic. Look forward. Thank you sir. The Penguins hope to avoid some northern exposure in Montreal. And the Pirates achieve another first with their win over the Padres. Plus, it was a wild ride in Talladega. Pat has the details in Action Sports. Do good things really come in small packages? This package contains the money you'll save at smaller car dealers. This one contains what you'll save at number one Cochrane. So if good things come in small packages, remember, better things come in bigger ones. It's GM Loyalty Days at number one Cochrane. Save up to 4,000 on Pontiacs, up to 5,000 on Buicks, up to 5,500 on Cadillacs, up to 5,500 on GMCs, up to 6,000 on Oldsmobiles, right now at number one Cochrane in Monroeville and Robinson. It never rests, but it can let you down. That's why UPMC Health System was among the first to do minimally invasive bypass through a three-inch incision without stopping the heart or cutting the breastbone. So you experience less pain and a quicker recovery. In this field of the heart, we bypass all others because we're a health system like no other. UPMC Health System. Let's crunch some numbers on America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. Right now, every caravan comes with remarkably low 1.9 financing, or up to $1,000 cash back. Or on this caravan, subtract $750 cash back, hit total, and your price is under $17,300, making Caravan America's lowest price minivan. And imagine what all these savings can do for your bottom line. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Live your life chasing dreams. National City is in the business of helping you catch them. You know where you want to go, and National City can help you get there. Because we realize our IRAs, trust plans, and home loans are more than financial services. They are bridges to your dreams. National City. Follow your own lead. There's this place you only think you know. That's like no place you've ever known. A majestic place that sets sail to the center of your heart. A wonderland of the things you love. A magical place where dreams really do come true. What did you expect? This is New York.
There are two sides to every Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, the side you show the world is up to you. Now you can get 1.9% APR financing or $1,000 cash back on Monte Carlo. Live with Matt Paris, this is Channel 4 Action Sports. Well, if only beating the best team in baseball <laughs> would put us at the top of the heap. Well, we're still at the beginning of the season. Yeah. They're playing well, but there are 162 games, so one oh, game yeah. does not make a season. It's been an eventful three-game series for the Pirates in San Diego. A win on Friday, a loss in 16 innings last night, and today a shutout victory. Not bad against the best in the West, the Padres. Finally, John Lieber avoids serving up the long ball. Here he strikes out Carlos Hernandez in the second inning. Then the next batter is Archie Cianfranco. Lieber K's him to end the second. Eight strikeouts for Lieber. The Bucks finally break the scoreless tie in the seventh. Doug Strange hits through the right side, driving in Jermaine Allensworth. That ends a 20-inning scoring drought. Then it's Kevin Brown uncorking a wild pitch. Jose Guillen scores ahead of the throw for a two-zip lead, but Guillen bruises his left knee sliding in. Should be able to play tomorrow night. The Pirates add to that lead in the eighth. Jason Kendall delivers the RBI single to the left. Tony Womack comes in, three-zip. Al Martin puts it out of reach in the ninth with the with two on. He sends the ball to deep right field. It'll just clear the fence. A three-run round tripper, and the Bucks beat the Padres six to zip. It's the first time this season the Padres have been shut out. Lieber goes eight innings, picking up his first win. The Pirates are in San Fran tomorrow night. It's a travel day in the Penguins Canadians playoff series. Each team winning a game in Pittsburgh. More on tomorrow's game three matchup in Penguins tonight. If we're to have any success, that's the type of effort we need, and I, I hope our players realize that. Tom Barrasso's teammates had that intensity Saturday night as they manhandled the Canadians, but the 4-1 win doesn't mean the Pens think this series will end quickly. Both teams have played hard the first two games, and, um, you know, really both games could have went either way. There's a lot of opportunities at both ends, and, and uh, so, yeah, I don't think, um, you know, either team is going to make this a short series. The Pens now head to Montreal for game three. Not a problem for a team that's played well on the road, especially in Montreal, where Pittsburgh's won a pair and tied another this season. It's going to be different because it's playoff hockey, but... You know, we've been a good road team all year long. Um, you know, we tried to set ourselves up to have home ice advantage in the playoffs, and we did, but we lost that in the first game, so now we have to win there. We have confidence, but we know they're going to be even better up there, and it's going to take uh, an even better effort than we had tonight to win. You know, we came in here, and we got one game, and, uh, you know, we got to go back and get prepared tomorrow and get ready for our home games now. Even at a game apiece, the best of seven series moves from Pittsburgh to Montreal. Game three is tomorrow night at the Molson Center. Look for my live reports from Montreal tomorrow evening on Action News at 5.30 and 6. Eastern Conference playoff action this afternoon and a couple of games decided in overtime. For the second straight game, OT is on the menu for the Caps and Bruins. Nearing the end of the first overtime, P.J. Axelson thinks he scores the game-winning goal. But look again, upon further review, there's a Bruins boot in the crease on the right side there. Tim Taylor with a boo-boo, no goal, on to a second overtime. That's where Washington's Joey Juno ends it. The shot just under the crossbar. The Caps turn the defeat into victory. They take a 2-1 to -one lead in that series. The surprising Senators this afternoon taking the Devils to overtime in Ottawa. Senators on the power play in OT. Alexi Yashin with the wrister that beats Martin Brodeur. Game over. Ottawa shocks New Jersey 2-1. to one. The eight-seeded Senators now lead the top team in the East two games to one. On to the NBA playoffs. While the rumors fly about Michael Jordan and the future of the Bulls, MJ goes to work. Game two between the Bulls and Nets today. Second quarter, MJ will drive and score on the spin move. Chicago by 16 at the half. The Nets make a run, but Jordan has the answer. He blows by Kendall Gill, scores and draws the foul. Jordan to game high 32. The Bulls win 96-91. They lead the best of five series two games to none. To racing and the diehard 500 today at the Talladega Super Speedway. Big trouble with just 48 laps to go. A fiery wreck involving 20 cars. It starts when Dale Earnhardt is bumped. He hits Bill Elliott who goes hard into the wall. Then it's real mess. Now a replay on board Bill Elliott. And that's what it's like to drive 
in a NASCAR event. Uh, Elliot and Earnhardt shaking up, but okay. After a 27-minute red flag, that's Bobby Labonte passing his brother Terry with two laps left, and Bobby Labonte wins the race. Jimmy Spencer is second, Dale Jarrett third. More racing tops of Sunday Sports Wire. Rain washing out today's kart race in Nazareth, PA. They'll run the Bosch Grand Prix tomorrow morning. And weather woes for the Steelers as well. Bill Cowher canceling the final day of their mini camp for rookies and free agents. Heavy rain at Three Rivers, the reason. Finally in sports, it's the dream of every golfer, a hole in one. There you see it, Hal Sutton's a pro, but it's still a thrill for him. He aces the 198 yard 12th hole today at the Greensboro Classic, right in the bottom of the cup. Sutton takes home a new car for the effort. Trevor Dodds wins the tournament in the playoff, his first tour victory. And why should we be surprised? That's where he was aiming, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. He wins that formula, racer. <laughs> no, yeah, well, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Talk about adventure. You will meet the skydiving priest when we come back. A lot of industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver side was the only logical choice. But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. It's a pure cold shower from nature. Bringing life to your home, to the world. Come and get it water. Water for life. Come and get it water. Try Culligan Bottled Water. Sign up this month to get the first 15 gallons of water free and the first month's dispenser rental also free. Seal it. I don't suppose I could convince you to sit on this for two weeks. Oh my God. Oh, no. They can deny it. Turn your camera off. But all that matters in the end. You're gonna die if you stay here, you know that. Is who will survive it. Get out of there! If you love me, you'll go. We will prevail. Deep impact. Life will go on. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, May 8th in theaters everywhere. From the family of minivans that have won more total awards than any other with an available second sliding door, standard air conditioning, roomy seven passenger seating, and easy out roller seats. With all this, you may think it's one of the most expensive minivans you can buy, but it's not. It's the lowest price minivan you can buy. The award-winning Plymouth Voyager. Now get low 1.9% financing on every new minivan at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. My face is square, so these frames are right. Right? Do I have to live with lenses this thick? I want to see the big picture and the fine print, but I don't want bifocals. You have questions about finding the right glasses. At Sears Optical, our people have answers. We'll help you find the exact pair of glasses that's right for you. Sears Optical. Ask us. You'll see. This week only, get any frame with ultralight lenses, even no-line bifocals, just $149. And finally tonight, just when you thought you'd seen it all... Father Victor of Siberia certainly has an adventurous spirit. He recently parachuted to the North Pole and erected an orthodox cross on the so-called roof of the world. His next adventure, a jump to the bottom of a volcano crater. And before we go, we just got this in. There will be no classes for students tomorrow at Forest Grove Elementary School in the Montreux School District because of a gas leak. That is Action News at 11. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Channel 4 Action News brought to you by Barrel Family of Dealerships, where you get treated like a star. This has been a presentation of WTAE TV. Channel 4 Action News is everywhere. The following 
is a WTAE-TV editorial. Here is President and General Manager Jim Hefner. What if we held an election and nobody came? Looks like that could happen this year. The primary is weeks away, but you'd be hard-pressed to know it. Sure, it's an off-year election, but the State House and a U.S. Senate seat are up for grabs. Seems it's not just President Clinton who is enjoying the benefits of a rosy economy, however. Incumbent Governor Tom Ridge and Senator Arlen Specter are basking in the glow of this halo as well. But this season of our content could produce a victim, the Home Rule Charter in Allegheny County. Low voter turnout, the culprit. The charter is the new county constitution that would dramatically alter and improve our form of county government. Opponents are few and far between, mostly hangers on from the row offices and other special interests. And you can bet they'll be going to the polls. You should too. Don't let apathy win the day. This has been a WTAE-TV editorial. Responsible replies are welcome. Ah, the delicate.